Merhabalar herkese, IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün İngiltere'de bilişim yüksek lisans programları ile ilgilenenler için Nuria ve Hüseyin Bey'in sunumunu dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı sağ alt köşede questions bölümünden yönlendirmeyi unutmayın. Yes Nuria, the stage is yours now. Thank you, Zeynep, and thank you for inviting us to talk uh, to the students. And welcome to everyone to our Bournemouth University uh, webinar. Today we are going to cover all the uh, postgraduate um, programs in the Department of Computing and Informatics. For all of you that don't know me, my name is Nuria Moyano. I'm a work in the international office at Bournemouth University. I am the regional manager for Turkey. And today we are uh, very pleased to uh, introduce as well our um, academic, senior academic, Dr. Hussein Dogan, who is the associate professor in computing and informatics. So, um, you will see just a little bit of uh, um, information about the chat and the platform. You have a chat in here, and if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to pull to put all the information in there, and uh, we will try to answer the questions as much as we can, and we can go over them at the end of the presentation. Um, Dr. Hussein is going to talk to you about the programs that we have, and then at the end I will join you, and I will give you just some general information about uh, Bournemouth University. So I hope you have a lovely session and please um, engage uh, with us. Um, it's up to you, Hossein. Thank you. thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Nuria. And thank you, Zeynep, for inviting us. Uh, what I would like to do is we've got a set of slides. So I'm going to talk about the uh, postgraduate master's programs that we run in, in the computing and informatics department. I will talk about these programs one by one give you a flavor of what it covers and what kind of job opportunities you could have after completing these master's programs all the way from cyber security to data science which are quite popular nowadays in the field of computing information technology digital health iot internet of things so these are really um, popular areas and these are the areas that in terms of the job market um, there are a lot of opportunities um, around the world so what I would like to do first is introduce myself. So I am Hussein Doan. Uh, I'm an associate professor uh, in computing, and I'm, I'm also the acting deputy head of the department. Depart that this is the Department of Computing and Informatics. Um, I, I, I manage research side of things as well. So I'm the director of the Computing and Informatics Research Center. And then uh, we have around 48 academic members of the research center. And then um, we bring around uh, one million pound uh, income every year in terms of research budget. Um, and uh, I also co-lead the Human Computer Interaction Research Group. I co-founded it too. And I also co-founded the uh, Digital uh, Health Masters and Cybersecurity Masters. So two master's programs I was involved in co-founding at Bournemouth University. I've got a background in computer science. Um, uh, Queen Mary University at UCL, I did my human computer interaction masters. I was in industry for about eight years, working for a company called BAE Systems, aerospace and defense company, as a scientist working on technology uh, um, projects. So computer science into industry eight years, back into academia and working on human computer interaction, digital health related projects um, uh, recently. Bournemouth University, BU. We have a strategic investment. We have four strategic investment areas. These are to do with areas that the university are investing in, based on um, uh, based on the goals and, and and seeing in terms of where the technology is moving towards. So one of the investment areas is animation, simulation, and visualization. So what tools, techniques are available out there, and how we could grow it. Medical science. We work very closely with our colleagues from health and social sciences domain. And then, uh, uh, for example, the digital health masters that I'm going to talk about, we work closely with our colleagues from health and social science faculty. Sustainability, low carbon technology and material science is another area in terms of investment area and, and assistive technology. So this is to do with accessibility, people with disabilities, 
um, uh, accessing information and resources, what kind of assistive technologies are available out there. It could involve all the way to robotics, to well-being and so on. And I, I, I, I have been heavily focusing on assistive technology in terms of my research. And, and visited Galatasaray University in terms of some collaborations with them to do with Erasmus Plus visits, uh, focusing on assistive technology, running joint um, events with Galatasaray University as well. So these are the four strategic investment areas. And all our master's programs feed across these strategic investment areas. And we're contributing across different sectors, different domains, and different industries. Let me give you a quick uh, overview of the program. So the first program is Masters in Cybersecurity and Human Factors. This is unique. This master's program is probably the only one in the world. If you could find another master's program where human factors, human community interaction is uh, delivered together with cybersecurity, please do let me know. I can't find any. So this is unique. It is really good. It's not only looking into cybersecurity uh, challenges, techniques, and so on, um, not bringing the computing and cyber world together. It's also to do with human behavior, human factors, human content interaction related to the field of uh, cyber uh, security. It, um, we have really good links with industry, defense science technical laboratory in the UK. We have aerospace companies over here, like BAE Systems. We have finance companies in Bournemouth. And um, they are always recruiting from our master cybersecurity students. So I got students who I supervise are currently working for uh, places like uh, JP Morgan, uh, BAE Systems, Defense, Aerospace, FinTech. So it's quite popular. Data science and artificial intelligence. Uh, again, another very important area in the field of computing. Uh, and if you look at the data science market, you will realize there are a lot of jobs out there and they're always asking for data scientists to, to, to, to work on various projects. So what we cover in this Again, it's a bit more technical program. It involves um, data analytics tools, algorithms, uh, and, and, and a bit of uh, coding and analysis, um, data, um, the science techniques, and artificial intelligence algorithms in different contexts, ranging from all the way to fraud detection, digital health, transport sector, aerospace and defense, so variety of sectors again. Um, this is a bit more technical. You need to have a bit of technical background to, to, to, to apply to this. The third one on the list you can see is information technology. This is, this is a distinctive program because you don't need to have an IT qualification to, uh, to, to take this course. If you even have a low um, uh, degree, if you have a business related degree, uh, engine, any engineering degree, and you want to move into the field of information technology, this is the program to apply to. So we take you through traditional software development uh, cycles, how to develop software, how to develop apps, how to analyze them, how to, uh, how to code it, how to evaluate it, uh, taking you through all the way through the development cycles, the web systems and the database systems and the architecture behind it. And um, again, it does have a business system development angle to it as well. So it's, uh, you know, you could become an IT manager for working for a company um, and then uh, running various IT management uh, projects uh, if you graduate from this, this, this program. Let me move on. So the uh, digital health, I've already touched on it when I talk about the, when I mentioned the strategic investment areas. Digital Health is, is one of the programs I co-founded together with the Cyber Psychology, and it is becoming even more popular after COVID. Uh, digital Health, access to resources. What kind of digital health solutions do we need to develop? How do we get the participants, um, uh, patients involved in the development cycle? Uh, what kind of um, architectures, um, uh, healthcare technologies, we could provide to change behavior of patients. So these are the kind of projects you could work on. There's a module unit that, that I used to deliver, I found it, and it's called Integrated Digital Healthcare Project. As part of this Digital Health Masters and Digital Health and Artificial Intelligence Masters, we get projects from industry. We got projects from hospitals, University Hospital Dorset, local hospitals, for you to use it as a test case, as a case study, 
and apply the techniques and disseminate it. So we have real life industrial projects that you could work on. And we got close links with, with digital health companies like you diagnose diagnostics tools. And then we have graduates from our digital health programs. We're working as um, digital health and AI programs. We're working as data analytics for various digital health service providers and then startups and digital health centered IT companies. So um, digital health and AI combines the data science and AI units together with digital health. So if you're more interested in the data analytics and AI related topics within the health sector, and that's the program to consider. So it's a bit more specialist and AI focused, artificial intelligence focused. Let me move on. So um, what I could do is we could take the questions at the end as well. So uh, the last set of programs, master's programs we have are related to Internet of Things. So again, this is to be providing you with technical, creative, intellectual skills that you need to develop the IoT, Internet of Things, tools, techniques, visualizations, um, and then uh, provide those service products um, and solutions to the industry. It does focus on um, areas like sensor systems. I, it does focus on how IoTs are used in various sectors. Um, and uh, again, we have different pathways uh, that we're calling a pathways to do with Internet of Things IoT. So you could uh, go for an Internet of Things with cybersecurity. When it's with cybersecurity, it means 30% of the program is related to cybersecurity, 70% of it is related to Internet of Things. When we, or you've got another option, Internet of Things with data analytics. Again, it uses data and AI related modules, units to increase your competence to do with IoT data analytics technologies and then have some practical experience of data analytics tools in the context of IoTs. That, that's the program to go for. The split is again 70% IoTs and then 30% on the data analytics. So these are the variety of programs, but uh, I'm sure yeah, you might not be able to see this in detail, but this is, I, I just wanna take you over. So the, the columns you see there are the programs, the MSC programs, all the way from left to digital health to the right cybersecurity and human factors. So we've got eight different MSC programs you could apply to. Digital health is one of them, digital health and AI. Second one, third one, data science and AI. Fourth one, IoT. Fifth one, IoT with data analytics. Sixth one, IoT with cybersecurity. Seventh, MSC IT. And um, eighth program, cybersecurity and human factors. There is a bit of overlap across some of the programs, like digital health and digital health and AI. Cybersecurity, cybersecurity, and IoT. We have modules um, and using off the shelf uh, existing tools, techniques, and technologies. Uh, giving a practical domain knowledge. Uh, so if I if I am to take you through some of the um, units, for example, blockchain and digital futures, search and optimization, data management, uh, cloud computing, security and privacy in IoT. So these are very popular and and, and addressing the current issues and challenges that we have in industry. Uh, so we. Uh, uh, and uh, the good thing is you have optionality. So you could select optional units too. Usually in the first semester, you'll be studying two core units, compulsory units, and you could select a, um, an optional unit in the first semester. In the second semester, similarly, two core units, you could select an optional unit as well. So you got a choice of two optional units, four core units across the entire year. And once you complete your units, then you will be working on your MSc dissertations. With your master's projects and MSc dissertations, we have very good links with industry. I had students, master's students, who worked with uh, Microsoft in, in US, Seattle, and completed the project to, uh, for them, of working on eye tracking related experimentations. We have uh, uh, the user experience manager at Google. Uh, we have very close links with him and we run workshops and conferences together. So um, there are opportunities for you to move into industry uh, with, with um, 
those uh, big names, Microsoft's, IBM's, Google's, Facebook. We have presenters from those companies um, joining and delivering a guest talks as part of these units as well. What I want to do, just give you a flavor of, for example, uh, what kind of labs that we have. And in terms of the IoT, uh, if I take IoT as an example, so um, we're looking at wireless sensor networks, wireless mobile networks in terms of IoT. Um, you've got elective units like um, optional units like blockchain uh, and cybersecurity. In terms of our, our IoT lab, we have 100 and, uh, over 150 IoT devices, compass-wide uh, networks, um, um, electronics hack space. Um, we've got graduates who, who work for places like Vodafone, Siemens. And what's important is after completing your master's, you will have an opportunity to um, continue on a PhD study. If you want to do more research, we tend to have fully funded PhDs, um, self-funded ones. We got much funding from the companies. Um, uh, so we could cover your costs in terms of if you want to uh, continue to do research in these fields. We have research groups related to cybersecurity, research groups related to data science and AI. Um, I lead a research group called Human Computer Interaction. We have another research group uh, centered on processes and behavior understanding and, and, and uh, one to do with smart technology. So we have a variety of research groups. You as a master's student could join to understand how research is also conducted. Career prospects. So this, these are the companies that we have really good links with. All the way from, I mentioned, IBM, Intel, Google UK, Microsoft UK, um, Oracle, and uh, a National Health Service, NHS. Uh, so we have graduates from the master's programs working for these companies. And I tend to check uh, the projects that I supervise in terms of MSc dissertations, their LinkedIn profiles. And I could see how quickly they're moving up the ladder in terms of their career. And they're doing really well. I'm, I'm amazed to see, you know, someone graduating three, four years ago are now managing their own team and, and, and running their own projects. So, and even having spin-off companies, a uh, uh, few of our graduates. So we've got really good stories to tell as well. One of my uh, students um, formed his own app development company, for example, and then uh, they're doing really well. Um, what I will do now is I'll uh, hand it over to uh, Nuria to give you an uh, overview of uh, Bournemouth Town and University and, and other details, then we'll take questions after that. Thank you. Over to you, Nuria. Thank you, Hussein. That was really interesting. I'm sure that the students will find very useful to see the variety of programs that we offer and uh, the opportunities, the career employment opportunities that they are um, at the end of their master's. Well, for me, just have, I have only three slides uh, for you. And um, this one basically is just to let you know if you don't know where Bournemouth is, now you know that it's in the south coast of England, as you can see in the map. And uh, Bournemouth is a small town and um, it's uh, situated in the south coast of England. It's a very uh, popular uh, tourist uh, resort and it's popular because of its famous 12 kilometers of sandy beaches. And um, it's a very international cosmopolitan town and it has plenty of entertainment, things to do. There is shopping centers, there are restaurants. It's what we call, um, it's a university town. And um, so it you will have the opportunity to meet uh, friends around the town. The good thing about Bournemouth is this very small. And uh, where the university is, it's only 25 uh, minutes uh, far away uh, from the city center. And uh, this is uh, basically walking distance. You know, it's five, 10 minutes uh, by bus. And uh, so it gives you the opportunity to meet the students um, in a very small area. But it's not boring because it's a very in international place. So you will still have plenty of things to do. And the location is fantastic. It's two hours far away from London by train. 
or by coach, we have also our own international airport and you can go to, if you want to visit Europe, that will be a fantastic opportunity, you know, for you. And there are flights as well to go to Turkey. I think uh, there are flights, direct flights, I think, are with, um, uh, to boardroom in the south uh, of, uh, of um, Turkey. So that could be another option. Thank you, Hussein. Next one, please. So in terms of uh, what we are as university, if you decide to come to the uh, to Bolmo to study your master's, I, th I thought that it was important for you just to get a little bit more familiar with the university. So we were established in 1992 as a university, but we specialize in professional oriented programs. So what it means is basically all our programs offer the students opportunity to take a, a work placement and also when we develop our programs we take into consideration what the employers are looking for so our students get the skills that are very much uh, um, the employers are looking for basically and um, you will have the opportunity if you decide to come to Bormo to study one of the masters in computer and informatics to take a 30 weeks placement and we can you can what well, you have heard uh, basically Hussein to talk about the uh, placement opportunities and the career prospects that the students have. Um, so it's a fantastic opportunity for you just to develop that practical size as well. Um, in terms of um, investment, the university has gone through uh, major investment. Uh, in the last few years, we have invested 250 million pounds in our facilities, buildings, and in our academia. And um, you can see some of the pictures of Talbot campus. And uh, this is where you will be studying the masters in computing and informatics, and you will enjoy as well the fantastic uh, facilities as well. I know for some students, uh, ranking is important and uh, we uh, are doing quite well in the, our national rankings in the UK. Uh, the university went up at uh, 26 places um, in the Times Good University Guide, um, also 70 places in the Guardian University Guide. And in terms of what we are in the rankings, we are numbers 56 out of 120 UK universities. So it's, uh, it's quite good um, position. In terms of world rankings, we are one of the top 400 universities and also one of the top uh, 70 young universities in the, in the world under the 50 years of age uh, category. I know it's important, particularly the world rankings for students that are uh, um, applying for the Ministry of Education scholarships um, because one of the requirements is that the university needs to be in the best uh, 400 or I think actually it's 500 universities in the world. So that is very good news uh, for you. But despite that, we also have an, uh, uh, an agreement and uh, with the Ministry of Education. So you will not have any problem even if the rankings uh, change in the future to come to the university. In fact, we have quite a lot of our students um, with us um, from the Ministry of Education. We have two campuses, it's Talbot and Lansdowne, but Talbot is the one that you will be studying in terms of um, our students' community. Um, we have 17,500 students, 2,800 are uh, international and they are coming from uh, 135 different countries, so it's very international um, university and 95 students are from Turkey. We have uh, students um, in the computing and informatic uh, programs um, across uh, different uh, programs as well, but our programs in that area are quite uh, popular as well but we would like to, to welcome you if uh, you decide to come uh, to Bournemouth and to join Bournemouth. Thank you, Jose. Next one. And just to finish, um, just general facts um, about our programs. So if you join in September, 
uh, the program is uh, 12 uh, months. And um, if you join in January, we have started in January, the programs are 16 months length plus 30 weeks of work uh, placement opportunity. So all in all, you can study or one year or two years with work placement or two and a half years with work placement if you decide to come in January. So it will change slightly, but the course is exactly the same. And in terms of academic entry criteria, and um, Hussein has already covered um, some of the areas, you will need a bachelor's degree. For some of our programs, um, um, you will need uh, a background in that area. But for some of our other programs, uh, we accept the students from different disciplines, like uh, for the um, IT program and informatics, uh, information technology. And for that one, we accept the students from different backgrounds as well. In terms of grades, um, usually will be, if you are from Turkey, a GPA of 2.5, but sometimes we consider lower GPAs. If you are studying in a top ranking university, we will be looking at the whole, um, application profile and also our academics are involved in selecting the students so if uh, one of the students don't meet the entry criteria academically we will send the application to the uh, faculty and they will be um, looking into your um, whole profile and then in terms of english entry criteria you need uh, ielts uh, six overall or equivalent. This could be TOEFL, it could be Pearson, it could be the password English test as well. And the very specific information about the university, about Bournemouth, is that we do accept um, students uh, from um, universities that are studying, um, are providing the education in English. So if you are doing your bachelor's degree four years uh, in English and you have graduated within two years of coming to the university, we will exempt you from IELTS or from the equivalent. So we will accept that as an English entry criteria. Um, the bad news is that the fees are expensive, and uh, but uh, in comparison to other um, Turkish universities, um, they are much cheaper than other UK universities. And the good thing is that you will invest. It's expensive, but you will invest in your future. And uh, it's a very good investment. As um, Hussein mentioned as well, we have fantastic links with the industry and our students get uh, placements, but also they get career opportunities and the salaries are really good as well. And uh, because there is a shortage of skills in that area, particularly in the data analytics as well, um, the career employment is very high and uh, you will be able to to basically uh, to go up in the ladder as Hussein mentioned as well. Um, in terms of scholarships, the good news is that we do provide a scholarship for um, Turkish students and uh, you can have the Academic Excelling Scholarship and this is given to you automatically if you have a GPA of 2.8 out of 4 and that is 3,500 pounds um, fees discount or uh, we also provide opportunity scholarship which is up to 1500 pounds this is very much uh, based in your um, personal statement in your portfolio as well and this usually for those students that perhaps they don't meet the academic excelling scholarship so there is opportunity for you you know to get uh, one thing or another and uh, so this is all for uh, from from me, and um, I can see that uh, if you have any questions, we are very happy, you know, to answer. And uh, at the moment, I went through the chat, but I couldn't see any. Uh, any maybe questions. there are some questions now. In ah, the, okay. Uh, it's oh, not maybe the I need chat. to refresh. Uh, on the left of the chat, chat, you've got the questions icon uh, option. If you select that, so. I could start answering some of these. Uh, let me start from the first one. So, uh, Bekir Asam Chelik asked, uh, I'm looking for a master's or a doctorate in business analytics. Do you have a chance to do that at Bournemouth University with a full scholarship? 
So with masters, as Nuria mentioned, you could get partial scholarship and, and that's already mentioned. And you could look at our scholarship options on the Bournemouth University website. With, doc, the, with, with PhDs and doctorate, uh, keep an eye on, um, uh, on Bournemouth University's website, you will have the careers uh, like jobs page and any fully funded PhDs are advertised there. So keep an eye on the roles. If, if you see a fully funded PhD related to business analytics, related to something that you're doing, you could apply to that. Alternatively, if you come up with your own proposal and submit it, uh, then uh, receiving a, a fully funded scholarship, uh, we don't have such processes. So then it's self-funded if you propose your own idea. But however, as I said, there are opportunities online. Keep an eye on it, then you could apply to it. It's, it's to do with PhDs and it's to do with postdoctoral research. Uh, there was another question to do with mm. computing that Edda asked. Can I enroll if I don't have a computing background in education? Yes, you can, but not to, to all programs. So if I go back to our program list, uh, I could give you a quick overview, probably what programs are more applicable to uh, to uh, to those without any computing background. If you don't have a computing background, MSc in information technology, MSc in IT is a good one to apply to. So you don't have to have computing background. So this will teach you this the, the provision, the delivery is focused on those without any computing background as well. And similarly, digital health, uh, you know, you don't have to have a computing background to do with digital health. These are more like conversion courses. But if you are going into the area of data science, uh, cyber security, uh, and IoT, then some sort of a technical background might help. It doesn't need to be computing. You might have an engineering background related to it. You might have a finance economics uh, background that's related to cyber security. So do apply and do try it. Uh, but the, yeah, for some of the programs, you don't have to have a computing background. Uh, let me see. I'm moving up. So will we have the opportunity for internships Perfect. and hands-on experiences? Nuria, you mentioned a few things. I could say a few things as well, if you prefer. Um, yes, uh, most of the programs, in fact, all the programs provide you the opportunity to do a 30 weeks uh, work placement. And this is after um, your teaching schedule, basically. And um, Quite, uh, we have a department at the university that help our students to to get the the placements. And um, but uh, ultimately, you will have to prepare the CV and to pass the interview because what you need to be aware is that um, um, these placements are paid. So the employers the employers are basically providing you with work. And, uh, but the university will help you to prepare for that interview and to, to get the, the job opportunity as well. We also have links with a lot of uh, different industries and every year, as Hussein was mentioning, we have uh, people coming to talk to our students as well and to provide um, lecturers and they come and talk about the opportunities available to them and uh, the kind of jobs that they can do as part of the talks as well and um, maybe Hussein you want to um, yeah. uh, so, cover uh, that a little bit mm -hmm. yeah. so in terms of placements to do with computing we have good links with companies yes uh, there are opportunities we have a placements coordinator in the department dedicated to that to help you to apply for placements as well so that is uh, possible i'm going from uh, towards the end i'm going up in terms of the last people who asked the questions and let's see so let's see how we could manage this the edge gune asks are the students able to work during their studies the answer is yes they could work up to 20 hours and we already have for example especially on our digital health program I've provided references to students who are working those hours and completing their masters at the same time. So there are a lot of opportunities in terms of if you want to work part time uh, during your time here. Mm -hmm. uh, Kerem, Kerem Kurt asked, what is the minimum GPA requirement for a finance master's program? Is it possible to get acceptance with a lower than 2.5 GPA? 
Over to you, Nuria. You mentioned that it is possible depending on what university institute they graduate from, but I'll hand it over to you for this one. Yes, that is right. Uh, we do accept the students with lower entry criteria. For us, it's important to have a, a, a high GPA, but it's not the main thing. We will be looking at the whole, you know, uh, your um, work experience with uh, other things in your application, your student profile. What I would recommend you is if you haven't got, if yours your GPA is lower than uh, 2.5 or even 2.3, which uh, that is the, the minimum, minimum. Um, I will recommend you to focus very much on your personal statement. And it has to be a strong. You have to show, you know, uh, motivation and uh, you have to show that you are really able um, to, to study at master level. And, uh, but we will be looking at everything. The answer is yes. So uh, quite a few more questions. Let's go through them quickly. Let's see. Perot yep. asks, what are the approximately monthly expenses that the students have to pay? Okay. Nuria, have you got um, Yeah, but you have to calculate more or less um, um, per year. So you will have the, uh, I don't know per month, but I can give you an estimate per year. Usually you will need like a 25,000 pounds just to cover the whole thing. And it's about uh, 10,000 pounds in uh, accommodation. Depends where you are going to stay, obviously. Then the, the course as well. And um, actually, maybe 28 now because all the expenses have gone up. So unfortunately, it's not cheap. But yeah. the good news is that you can work 20 hours per week. And perhaps you can cover at least some of your expenses in food and the the main needs but you need to prove when you apply for a visa that you have that money in the bank and you are able to pay your studies whilst you are in the uk otherwise you will not be able to get your visa let me tell you we have a student from turkey on our current masters in data science and artificial intelligence and he's doing really well his current average is over you know 70 percent and distinction and he's also working part-time so yeah, um, yeah. Uh, do you have, okay, there's more questions that was, okay, now Faiza Yalchan, do you offer English pre-sessional uh, English if you don't reach the required level of uh, English language? Yes, that's right. We do have the pre-sessional English program and uh, we have our Bournemouth University International College, which is located as well in Bournemouth. And uh, if you decide to apply to Bournemouth University and you have an offer, in the offer, um, if you don't have, you don't meet the English entry criteria, we will put reference to the um, pre-sessional English program and you are welcome to join. It's specifically for our students. Uh, there is another one. Do you accept only IELTS or any other ones, Duolingo and a few more others I mentioned yeah. there? Uh-huh. Um, yes, we do uh, accept IELTS, TOEFL, and there is a variety. The best thing to do is go into the website and uh, enter requirements for international students, and you will see the um, the um, the options that uh, you can study. But yes, the answer is yes. Okay, Beck here asked, um, I have one more question. Is Digital Addiction Research Group is still active at Bournemouth University? Okay, Beck here. Uh, digital uh, addiction after publications in that domain working of um, Professor Ryan Ali who left, but we got John McAllenie. John McAllenie from our psychology, Professor John McAllenie, I work with him and I'm having a meeting with him next Tuesday to discuss digital addiction. We are still active, but we are planning to reframe it, not just focusing on digital addiction, but this nowadays is more to do with well-being and how the technology should be utilized rather than using the term addiction. Uh, so uh, yes, it is active, it is happening. We got research projects and we got research initiatives in that domain. Um, okay, we got Laila uh, Minirova asking, who yeah. supports Korea and employability services for students at your university? Mm -hmm. We do have a specific team that is the careers and employability uh, department. And um, so it uh, belongs to the university. So it's available all the um, 
information is available to all our students. When you come to join the university, you will have access to the uh, careers database and uh, you can start from the beginning to start looking at the uh, companies that um, we work with and uh, we have any links with and or they are looking for uh, students for part-time or full-time. And also after graduation, you will be um, able to get access to the database for a further five years. So the information will be there. Also, the people that are there, they specialize in uh, obviously in getting the students or helping the students uh, to get a job. And uh, if you need any improvement in your um, skills in terms of, um, you know, uh, doing interviews or presentations or how to prepare your CV, we work, uh, they, they provide um, um, information during the whole year. Um, workshops where students can get that information and can get ready for their jobs. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. Merve Yilmaz is asking, I think I could uh, partially answer this question. The mm -hmm. questions are getting tougher. Is it possible to transfer credits from a university in Turkey for a, a degree in the UK? We have something called uh, prior learning. So if you've complete, completed a module, a unit from another university, but I don't know whether that covers international, maybe Nuria could help with that, you could have a, a credits. So yes, you could transfer some of the credits you, you completed across to your program. So you could do less modules and units. That's usually the case with UK universities, but I'm not sure about the hmm. international. Nuria, do you have any ideas or? No, um, I, I wouldn't know the final answer for that. I know for undergraduate programs, I know that yeah. we do have, for master programs, I am not 100% sure. I'm again with international, unless we have an agreement with the university and we have recognized those credits, yeah. it will be a little bit uh, difficult, but we can check and uh, we can come back to you, Merve, if... Uh, you know, if you would like uh, more information on that. Um, I think yeah. you have in here um, my email. Um, Hussein, do you mind just to go to the to the beginning or the back and there will be my email in there? Yeah. yeah. So you are welcome to send me an email, uh, Merve, and I can, um, I can check, um, but because I know 100% of the answer. Yeah. But um, in terms of uh, yeah, prior academic learning, we call it. So there are processes in place. As mm -hmm. long as you can demonstrate it, um, uh, it, it, it might be possible. So we need to check that. And yeah. uh, do we, uh, okay, Merve is asking another question. Do we have work permit while we're studying in the UK? You could work up to 20 hours uh, in terms of part-time. We, we answered that already. You could be on the full-time program, work 20 hours part-time, and then you have an additional two years work permit after you graduate, uh, after you complete your master's program. Uh, how is living expenses in Bournemouth? We have covered that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I could say is cheaper than London. <laughs> yeah. It is better than London. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hussein, just let me uh, add something to the point from Merve yeah, as well. You know, when you are in the UK and you are studying a master's, you will have a visa that is specifically for the for students. With that visa, you are allowed to work, as Hussein well said, 20 hours per week maximum. You cannot go over that. However, after you graduate, you can apply for a second visa, which is the international, you know, the graduate international visa. With that one, if you have a job, you can stay for two years and you can work full time or as many hours as uh, as you wish, basically. But it will be two different visas. So it will depend on your visa and your situation. Sorry. Yep. Thank you. No, that's great. Thanks for the clarification as well. I think we covered uh, so all the questions asked so far. Any, any other questions from anyone? I can't say anything else. Have I missed anything, Nuria? I think we pretty much covered everything. Mm, no, I think we have. I'm just double-checking as well now that I know where I can see the questions. 
and oh, her. Uh, yeah. Oh, is it? The, if you look at the chat, on the left of the chat, you will see another icon called questions. I don't know whether it's on your screen on the right hand side corner. Yeah, that is fine. Thank you. I just uh, I found it. Uh, so thank you so much for reading the questions for me. That's okay. That was very useful. Thank you, Hussein. So no, I don't think we have any more questions from our students. Yeah. No. And um, so from me, um, may, uh, I just want to say that uh, all the information is in our web pages and, um, you know, we just cover everything that we could. And, uh, um, but if you are interested in Bournemouth University, you will see, um, you, you can go to the website and uh, find all the information in there. You are very welcome to contact me uh, directly. And if you have any specific uh, questions, um, I know how it is that sometimes you are watching uh, something in life and, and then when you, um, when you realize maybe there is a question that you haven't answered, uh, you haven't asked and you want to know. So you are very welcome to, to contact me. Um, I will try to do my best to, to come back to you as soon as possible. And um, thank you um, all the students from, uh, for being so engaged, uh, engaging with us. And um, I would like also to thank you, Hussein, uh, for your time. I know that you are a very busy man and um, um, you have done a fantastic uh, presentation and you have covered everything very well. I'm sure that the students will appreciate um, the information. It was uh, very useful. I mean, it was useful for me as well to learn a little bit more as well, our programs. And, uh, and thank you, Zeynep, for, uh, for inviting us. So this is uh, from me. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Could I, sorry, could I also mention any uh, questions you have specifically related to the computing master's programs I mentioned? Do send me an email. I could put you in touch with the course directors, program leaders, who could provide further details if needed. Thank you. Over to you, Zeynep. Yes, thank you very much for the great presentation there, Nuria and Hussein Bey. It was a very informative session for the attendees. And you covered all of the questions. Thank you for your answers, too. Also, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Kadınlarınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. Burnemouth University ile ilgili diğer soruları için ekranda görmüş olduğunuz mail adreslerinden Nuria ve Hüseyin Bey'e ulaşabilirsiniz. Bir sonraki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again, you guys. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. <laughs> Thank you. Bye all. Thank you. Bye. Take bye care. Bye. Thanks. Bye.